Hey, what's going on guys? In this mini series, we're gonna be diving into Sales.js, which I've, I've had quite a few requests for. Now, Sales is a, uh, uh, it's a full stack JavaScript framework that runs on top of Node.js. And if we look at the website here, you'll see it's, it's the web framework of your dreams. And down here it says, build practical production ready Node apps in a matter of weeks, not months. So this was created to really, for, for really rapid development and prototyping. Um, sales is the most popular MVC framework for Node.js, designed to emulate frameworks like Ruby on Rails. Okay, so uh, it has a it has a, a strong MVC structure, which is Model View Controller. That's a certain software design pattern that Ruby on Rails uses. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a simple CRUD application to start with. Um, that's that's how far I've gotten, but. If the series does good and people like it and it gets views and comments, then we'll move on to maybe add some authentication, add some deployment, things like that. So this is what we'll be building. It's a basic CRUD application for articles. It uses Bootstrap 4 beta as its UI. So, so we're using the latest version of Bootstrap 4 that just came out. And you can see we, ha we can view the articles in a table. So we have the IDs, we have the title, and we can edit the articles. So we'll just change this to say second article and we can save that. We can delete articles and of course we can add them. We'll just say another one. Hello world and articles just have a title and a body. But of course you can change that. You can add more fields to it. The idea with these types of projects is to give you a foundation so that you understand at least how the basics work so you can add on to it. All right, so that's what we'll be building. Now, there's two things you're going to need installed. You're going to need Node.js and you're going to need MongoDB. OK, now the default database that Sales uses is a disk based database called Sales Disk, which is not suitable, at least in my opinion, and it's not suitable for production. So we're going to be using the Sales Mongo driver to integrate MongoDB. Now, if you don't have MongoDB installed, and you don't know how to install it, I do have a video called MongoDB in 30 minutes, which you might want to check out, and I'll show you how to set it up on Windows. I also have a video um, showing you how to set it up on Ubuntu, okay? But you do want those two things installed before we start. All right, so that's what we'll be building in this series, guys. It shouldn't be more than a few videos, so let's jump in and get started. So if you guys really like my videos and you learn a lot from them and maybe you have a couple extra dollars to spare, check out my Patreon page. I'm working on creating special content for patrons. You also get special deals on future courses and there's even an email support tier for all YouTube videos and projects. To learn more, visit patreon.com slash traversymedia. All right, so we're going to jump right in here, guys. Now, as far as what I'm using as tools, I'm using Visual Studio Code as my text editor. I'm also using Git Bash for Windows for my command line. If you are on Windows and you want to use that, you can go to git-scm.com and you can download it here. You can now also download it for Mac. All right, so first thing we need to do if we go to the sales website here and go to get started, we need to install sales globally using NPM. NPM stands for Node Package Manager, and that automatically comes with Node.js. So as long as you downloaded Node, you have access to the NPM command. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to run NPM install, and we're, we're installing it globally, so it doesn't matter what file or, I'm sorry, what folder you're in right now. So we'll say NPM install dash G sales, and that's going to install it globally on your system. All right, and mine should go quick because I already have it installed. At least it should. Uh, and then once that's done, if we look over here, we need to just start a new sales project by saying sales new and then whatever we want to call the project. All right. So now that that's done, let's say uh, first you want to go to wherever you want to create your project folder. I'm, I actually have a, a folder called projects. And then what we're going to do, let me just clear this out. We're going to run sales. OK, since we installed sales globally, we have access to that command. And let me make this a little bigger. We're going to say sales new and then the name of our project, which I'm going to call article base. OK, and, and what that's going to do is it's going to generate a new project. It's going to create all of the sales files and all that stuff. All right, so now that that's done, we should be able to CD into article base. And from here, we can actually now run our server and we can do that by saying sales lift. And that, well, that should start it on port 1337 by default. So if we go over to our browser here, 
Let's close that up and we'll go to localhost port 1337. And this is the landing page. Okay. Now basically this is just one page of just some some information, just some some text, no dynamic functionality or anything like that. And it's telling us how to generate a new API with a resource and we're going to get to that. But let's go ahead and open this project, open our folder in um, Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go to article base and open that up. All right. So this is the structure of a default sales uh, sales project. If we look at package.json, you'll see we have sales down here, sales disk, which is the default database that's going to be used. Like I said, we're going to switch to MongoDB. I'll show you how to do that. Um, it also uses all kinds of grunt plugins, okay, to do all of its all the dev stuff. And then it also uses EJS for its template engine, which is embedded JavaScript. I believe that that's what that stands for. That's what it uses for views. Now you can build REST APIs pretty easily with sales as well. So you don't have to use a template engine. You can strictly build the back end and then use something like React or Vue to, um, you know, to to reach into the back end and, and work with it. But that's the package.json. And then if we look in the file structure, the most important things here for us are going to be in the API folder. We have our controllers models and then down here we have our views folder. So this is the MVC structure that I was talking about, which is very similar to Rails. All right. And then it gives us a home page EJS and a layout EJS. These are our templates. Now layout surrounds all of the views. So if, if we are going to use bootstrap like we're gonna and we need to include the CDN, this is where we're going to put it because every view is going to be wrapped in this layout. EJS. In fact, if we look down here where this body tag is, this is um, this is where any view that we we're looking at is going to be output. OK, such as this home page, which is actually what you're seeing right here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to generate um, an articles resource or an articles API. So to do that, we're going to go back into our command line. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is let the server run here. And then I'm going to open up my terminal from within Visual Studio Code. So if we go to view and then we go to integrated terminal, you'll see I also have Git bash um, integrated with Visual Studio Code. And I've, I've told you guys how to do this quite a bit. But in case you missed it, you can go to preferences settings and you can go and add this right here. Let me just make this bigger. So terminal integrated shell windows and set it to the location of git bash. OK, and that will give you git bash instead of PowerShell. All right. Now what I'm going to do is, like I said, generate an API for articles. So to do that, we say sales generate API uh, articles. OK, and it says create a new API. Now, if we go, let me just close that up. If we go over here now, and look in controllers. We have an articles controller JS file. This is our controller for our articles. And then we have a model inside models. We have an articles JS file. This is our model. OK, so it created those two things for us. Now, if we go to localhost 1337 slash articles. Actually, you know what? We need to restart the server. So let's do control C sales lift. Now, since we generate an API, it's going to ask us this question here about um, database migrations. So we want to we want to number two, which is alter to auto migrate. So we're going to just put two enter. OK, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that message, because right now, every time we run the server, it's going to ask us that message. So to get rid of it, you want to go to config and you want to go to. Uh, where the hell is it? The heck is it? I forget what file it's in config connections, maybe. No. Globals. What the hell is it? Oh, models. Yeah, models. So models JS and right here you'll see this commented outline migrate alter. So we're just going to uncomment that and save it. Now, another thing I want to do is instead of having to restart the server every time with sales lift, what we're going to do is install something called NodeMon, which will continuously watch the main app.js file and then reload it every time we save. 
So to do that, we're going to do npm install dash g. We want this globally node mon. And I think I already have it installed. Yeah. So once you do that, we can just run node mon app dot js. And it's going to start up our application and it's going to continuously watch it. Okay, so just a, a shortcut so you don't have to keep restarting your server. So now I want to go back here to localhost 1337 slash articles and reload. And you'll see we have an empty array. Since we created that articles API, we can go to this URL and it'll show us all the articles in our database, which of course we don't have any yet. Now sales comes with something really cool called blueprints. Let me see if I can find it uh, in the docs. Let's see sales in action. No, that's not what I want. The documentation is not that great. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's definitely not the best. So let's see, I want blueprints. You know what? Let's just search for sales. Blueprints. Okay, so blueprints API. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to go into the URL. Now, this doesn't tell me very much. You know what? Screw the documentation. So it allows us to go into the URL and actually add data through there. Now, this is not something you want to have enabled in production. I'll show you how to disable it. But for prototyping and just, you know, quickly adding data, it's really, really helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to say slash articles slash create. Actually, I already have it coming up here, but I'm going to get rid of that. So slash create. And then we want to do question mark. And then the first field we want, which is title. I'm getting this autofill. All right. So I'll just leave that, I guess. And then I'll go over it. I want article one. We'll say my first post. All right. So if we look at this, we have create and then a uh, question mark. We want a title field, which we're going to set to the text of article one. And then we have a body field, which we're going to set to my first post. Okay, so we're going to have a title and a body field. And then if we go ahead and click enter, you'll see that that'll actually get added to the database. So we have a title, we have a body. It also gives it an ID automatically and it gives it a created at and updated at. Okay, and if we want to add another one, we could just change this to, let's say, Article 2. And we'll change the body to my second post. Notice it's using the percent 20 as a space. We'll enter that. And now we see Article 2. And now if we go to slash articles, you'll see both articles. And they're in our database. Okay, now, like I said, it's using sales disk. So once we change to MongoDB, these will no longer be in there, but we can then again add them using blueprints. All right. So just a, just a cool feature that sales offers. All right. So let's see. I think that that's going to do it for this video, guys. Now that we have sales set up, we have um, we have our, our articles API resource set up. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to install sales Mongo, which is a, a MongoDB adapter. We'll get that set up. Uh, we'll add some data through blueprints into Mongo, and then we'll start on our actual application, building the UI, um, building the, the functionality to fetch articles and then output them into a view and things like that. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoy the series and I will see you in the next video.